be responding to the claim that Senate Bill 274, which Governor Brown passed on October 4, 2013, which allows a child in the state of California to have two, the more than two legal guardians, is going to be a beneficial bill for most of families in California. Um, her secondary claims, are, there's two of them. The first one is that it's leading the change in the acknowledgement of the new family dynamics in this generation. And second, uh, the bill isn't as unstructured as a lot of people have thought slash um, So based off her first point, um, there were some incons uh, data inconsistencies. Um, she said that 75% of marriages end in divorce. Um, and I looked at her source, and it was just a blog where like a guy wrote a couple of lines, like just a random guy just wrote a couple of lines and people were commenting on it. So I wouldn't really say that was the best source. Um, also, I looked up myself and even the U.S. Census Bureau said the divorce rate of first marriages is around 50%, second marriages is between 60 and 67%, and third marriages are between 73 and 74%. So the 75% that this guy used was off of third time marriages. So that kind of skews everything there. Um, another error in the data, this could have just been a miscommunication, I'm not sure. She said that the adoption rate was 2.1 million in the United States. Um, I'm not sure what she meant by this. She said rate, so that kind of makes me think like per year. But according to the U.S. State Department, uh, U.S. families adopted more than 9,000 children in 2011. So I don't know if she meant like 2.1 million total or what. Um, and these two points kind of undermine her main claim because her main claim says that it's going to benefit a lot of families. And using her statistics, it kind of makes it, think, makes it look like it's going to be more than it actually is. Um, so her second point was the bill is, isn't as unstructured as a lot of people think and assume. Um, again, with that, uh, it's going to help a lot of families. Um, really, it's not. It's really just for the most rare and special cases. Um, Barry um, Weinberger, who's a family lawyer, said it would expand parental rights, but only in unusual situations, and only when the kid needs of the child call for it. Um, he continues to say, um, Still, the two-parent rule remains the most common standard, and it is important to understand that in most cases, a child will still only have two parents. So really, the courts are only going to use this bill every once in a while on a rare occasion, because most of the time it's really not necessary to give a child a third or fourth parent. Um, so really, it's not going to be beneficial for too many families. Um, some people have actually argued that this bill can actually end up hurting the kids. Um, Brad Dacus, the president of Pacific Justice Institute, said that this in the long run is going to be a mistake. The ones who are going to pay the price are not the activists, but it's going to be the children, who will see greater conflict and indecision over a matter involving their well-being. And he actually makes a good point. You know, parents don't always agree on situations, and that's just, you know, with most kids only having two parents. So if you have three or four parents all disagreeing, thinking that you should do this or that, um, being the kid stuck in the middle of that, that could just be terrible. Um, the problem with uh, both of her secondary arguments is that neither one of them really helps support her main claim. Both of them really just say, here's a counter argument and this is why it's wrong. So neither one really builds up the main claim, it just tears down the counter argument. Um, so I hope that based on this reputation that you can see that this bill really isn't going to be that beneficial to too many families in California and that actually the bill could end up hurting some of the children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you, you signaled what the proposition was and what the secondary issues were pretty clearly. On the uh, first point, uh, you basically uh, challenged the information that the advocate is presenting on the statistic on divorce. It's a reasonable press. I think that uh, you've got a legitimate gripe about it. The long-run question, though, is how important is that? And I think that... Uh, you know, the fact that the advocate cited this information doesn't make their argument any better or worse, especially when you're arguing later on that 
it, it's rare cases that this is going to be applied anyway. So the notion that uh, we're going to be running into this lots and lots of times, I think, is minimized to some degree. Uh, the, the issue about the rate of adoptions, I thought that that was a little bit more applicable here. And I'm still a little bit confused because you're using a number that says 9,000 children. And the advocate's using a number that says 2.1 million. And there's a vast difference between those two numbers. So I need, you know, I, I don't know what, what are we talking about here. How many adopted kids are there? How many kids fit into this particular category? What's the likelihood that this going that these, you know, that this uh, third or fourth parent requirement is going to be necessary? I think that uh, it's it's very confusing, and that you ought to point out that there is because of the inconsistency in the numbers and the lack of clarity, that we should be very cautious about accepting the conclusion that the advocate is uh, making there. I think that would be maybe the right way to go on that particular argument. On the next argument where you, I think that that's probably where you have the strongest clash with the advocate's actual premise, and that is that this is really only likely to be used in extremely rare circumstances, so it's not that important, diminishing the importance of the claim, and then suggesting that there may in fact be a, com a complication because the presence of additional people who could be designated the parents of the child is likely to increase the uh, uh, the chances of conflict or stress with the kids. I think that's an interesting point. Um, of course, it's all very hypothetical since we don't have a lot of experience with this yet. Uh, although it sounds to me like one of the reasons that they put these, uh, you know, put this law into place is to address those kinds of complications. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. How how adding people to the mix helps reduce the complications. That's the thing that I think maybe the advocate needed to do a better job explaining, and that you needed to do a little bit stronger job challenging. All right. Thank you.